got this new Stratocaster right here. It's got the plastic on it, so I'm going to show you how to get all that off of there. This is another one that's all cleared off of the plastic. You can kind of see there's no plastic on here. I'll try to get it out of the reflection. Okay, so the first thing you want to concentrate on is you're going to have to loosen these uh, pick guard screws. So there's about nine of them or more. And it's these outer. Don't, don't loosen the uh, switch screws that are attached to the switch or the pickup screws. Those don't need to be loosened. Just the outer pick guard. Okay, so there's, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven of them on this guitar. So we need to loosen all those. So you'll need a Phillips head screwdriver. Okay, so I'm going to grab this guitar and do this, but I want to go over the tools that you're going to need otherwise. You're going to need also need a small slot head screwdriver. This is really little. See, it's really teeny. And you'll also need a pair of needle nose pliers. I guess regular pliers might work, but needle nose are pretty easy. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to kind of access these uh, outer screws one two so i just go down from the tip here just loosen them a little bit maybe two or three you can barely see that i loosened it don't take them out just loosen them and this is to get this plastic off here you really do want to get the plastic off of the guitar pick guard uh, it can actually kind of mess it up i've had a guitar that this red thing here left a big white mark and everything else was nice and had a nice patina except for where that sticker was. So I don't know what Fender did, but they didn't really look at their adhesive substance as actually interacting with the plastic. Anyway, so I'm loosening these pick guard screws. Once again, not the pickup. You'll know the pickup screws. They're right near, but they're actually right on the sides of the pickups. So don't change those okay so I've got all those loosened the next thing I'm going to want to do is get these uh, control knobs off of here so that's when I use the really small slot head screwdriver I'll bring this up so what you do is you just go under and just kind of wiggle the it's like a little hat plastic hat and then turn it kind of keep wiggling the screwdriver and eventually you'll realize oh it just comes right off you could do that first doesn't matter so just put that aside. I got a little music stand down here. Same thing here, spin it around while I'm kind of tweaking it up. And it will just come right off of the potentiometer stem. There's that one, and then the volume, same dealy bow. So I'm turning it while I'm kind of twizzling the screwdriver. It should just come right off, yeah. Okay. These are all, this is all look ahead so you don't have any problem with uh, getting the plastic off, maybe even in one piece. So I'm, once again, I'm going to loosen the nut on the potentiometer. Don't take it off, just loosen them. You'll see why. Just loosen them. You could even do a couple finger, yeah, just loosen, not remove, just loosen. So here I go. So all of those things now enable me to, I'm gonna go ahead and move this camera, sorry for the jiggly camera stuff. But um, so at, at some point I'm gonna need to get a corner of this plastic off of here and I just use my fingernail. It looks like that's just about ready to come up. Kind of just punk that up. There it goes. Okay, so what's going to happen is it's going to go over all those screws. It's really hard to see it. I don't know if I can even focus on it. Come on, you silly camera. Yeah, so it'll just poke right across the screws. And what I'll do is I'll just kind of keep going down here and it'll it'll go around the the switch it'll come up over it 
don't worry about it. Don't go so fast that you break the plastic. See if you can maybe keep it in one piece. A little easier to deal with. Same thing on the on the potentiometers. It'll just flow right up out of there. Ooh, isn't that nice? Let's see if we can get that. Yeah, it'll just flow right over because you loosened the potentiometers. Yeah, see what's going on there? I don't know why they don't just take it off, but they want you to think you're getting the prettiest guitar. Okay, and then the other thing is now, now it looks like it's going to go under the strings, right? So my little secret here is you use the vibrato bar and loosen the strings, and then you can kind of poke your fingers under there. You can actually poke it pretty far, almost to the edge of the other. Yeah, there I got the other, the other side of the plastic. You know, I went a little too fast there. I might not be able to get it all in one piece, but I did get to the other side. I can let that pick the vibrato bar go. So pretty much looks like it's going to come up as one piece here. Just doing the same thing on the other side. Now I can pull it through. Oh yeah. Nasty stuff here. Don't just shred it. It's just a nightmare to get it off of there. And my, I might kind of do that vibrato bar trick a little bit more. So it's coming up on the last little area. I'm actually going to watch it really carefully here. See if I can. Oh yeah. I always tell my students, you can have this. Ha uh ha, -huh, funny. Okay. Okay, so the plastic is off all in one piece. It's not caught under here. A lot of my students will come in and they'll have the plastic caught under here. Basically, you just, if you did that, God love you, but just loosen these, get the knobs off, loosen them a tiny bit, and the plastic will come right off. Okay, so now we just go in reverse. I'm going to tighten all the screws, the pick guard screws. I'm not overdoing it, just a little bit. You don't really want to use a drill, like a screwdriver drill for this type of stuff. It's just too fast and it's going to mess up your, the wood possibly. It could strip. So you don't want to mess with that. Just do them. Just finger tight. There's nothing, no great force needed on any of this stuff. Okay. Now I'll get my needle nose pliers and and also I might do these by hand, these uh, potentiometer screw the nuts here that hold those on. But I do want to have those tightened down a little bit. I don't really want those rattling or loose. Yeah, so once again, just hand tighten those. No big deal. So, now at that point, you've got the, uh, you've got the strap pretty much ready. The knobs go back on, and all you do, just make sure you've got the tone knob and the volume knobs separated. So I got the volume, I'll do the volume first. So, you want to turn up Turn that all the way up as if it's going to 10. And then put the 10 up towards your face. And then just pop it down. Pop the little hat on there. So once again, tone. Put the 10 up towards your face here. Doesn't have to be any scientific thing. Nobody looks at those numbers anyway. Right? <laughs> and just pop those little hats on there. Okay. So the bonus is what I do with the uh, vibrato bar. First of all, nobody keeps these plates on the back here. Those are just going bye-bye. Put it in a plastic bag and put it in the back of a drawer. And if you sell the guitar, oh yeah, I got the thing. That's fine. It's just way more comfortable without these dumb little plates on here and it's way easier to string your guitar and it's easier to adjust the springs which is what we're gonna do we're gonna do the Carl Verhoeven bridge setup well it's actually kind of Carl Grossman which is me slash Carl Verhoeven because he only did 
he only explained it up to a certain point. And there's some fascinating things about it. So, but I give him credit. He's awesome. So, okay, so now you can see the springs. Ain't it cool? Okay, and usually guitars come with them just jacked down here. Okay, and what's happening is the vibrato, the uh, tailpiece, is basically snug down on the deck. They call that. This is the deck. So we're going to lift it up off the deck. We're going to bring that up. And the reason will become apparent when you get this together. I bought these guitars at the same time, so they're, the black one's all adjusted. So this one I just started. I wanted to show that pick guard plastic removal. So uh, what you do is you loosen these screws. Lefty loosey, right? So I'm going to bring those screws out. Boy, that's stiff. And of course the guitar is going to lose its tuning because springs and strings are an equation. Isn't that cool? They're almost the same word. Springs and strings. So I'm taking this out and this takes a while. This, this adjustment process, so I'm not going to do it on camera. I'm going to show you the result though. So I'm going to bring up the black one here, which is all done. These guitars are E-flat tuned like Stevie and Jimi Hendrix. Okay, so the black one's all adjusted, and we can look again. The vibrato bar is off the deck, isn't it? So what's cool is I can actually go up or down. Now, if it's on the deck, you can only go down, which is cool, but I can go both ways. And if you set it up correctly, and that's with these screws here, you go back and forth. You, you bring the screws out, you tune it back up, and you adjust this one little thing. Check this out. I'll play the high G on the third string. And when I bring the, the bar up, it should be this sound. It should go three half steps. When I pretty much deck it out, when I smack that thing up, and I'm going to hit that. The cool thing is, if I, that, that's me. I already got this all adjusted. That took uh, a good 10 minutes to go back and forth, then tune it up, try it out, get it in tune, a little more adjusting back and forth. One time I passed it, I went, it was it was going up too high, it wasn't going up a minor third, it was going up there. It's like, oh, I went too far. Okay, so here's what happens when you do that. When you do the G string, that's a step and a half up. It's called a minor third. When I do the B string, it should only go a whole step, yeah. Hear it? And the skinny string should only go a half step with the same amount of tension that I bring up on the bar. So I have actually a codified set of circumstances. This one goes the furthest. This one goes one half step less than that. This one goes one half less. I got a bunch of things I can do. If I'm Like if I'm in E minor and I do these two notes. It's like, oh, well, those are, those are proportioned. So there's no way you could physically bend those notes up to those. And the thing that Carl Verhoen doesn't show is that the D string and the B string are the same. So I can actually bend an octave. There's no way you could do that. Since they're the same, I could do this. Really cool. Here's another nice one. This one. This one will go. This is one of my favorite ones. Is This B minor chord here will bend. All three of them I bend. It'll go to this. So a lot of neat things you can do. You got to kind of codify. Well, what are, what am I getting when I do that? There's a couple other ones. I believe the thick string is the same as the G. I'm not sure though. Yeah. 
So that's some neat things to know. So the octave here. So you actually have to know what you're doing to get the bonus. That's it. Thank you.